Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my July wrap up. I have a lot of books to talk about in this video, but that's mostly because I went on vacation at the very end of June, like during the last week of June. So I recorded my June wrap up a little bit early knowing that I was going to read books while on vacation, but I wasn't going to be back from vacation until like July 1st or 2nd or so. So I figured I would just take all of those books and throw them in my July wrap up. I read a lot on vacation. I read like three books while on vacation. Uh, so that really like bumped up my number. So yeah, I have a lot to talk about. So I'm going to just like jump right in. So first the videos that I made this month, um, I did the Beloved Books Project, which was something that was started on Twitter and Instagram. And then Marinus over at My Name is Marinus made a video talking about it. And I really enjoyed her video a lot. So I decided to do it myself. And basically in this video, I just talk about the really old and beat up and well-loved books that I own. I really appreciated all of the comments on that video as well. A lot of you guys shared sort of like the books that you really love a lot that you still own or you just reminisced about books that you owned as a kid that you kind of still wish that you still had. And then I did sort of like a mid-year check-in with my reading goals. So far I'm doing relatively okay but I can already tell that like my brain is not quite as focused on goals as it was in the first half of the year. Maybe it's just summer but I can tell like my reading is changing a little bit or my desires in terms of my reading are changing a little bit. But yeah, you can definitely check out that video if you're interested in seeing like what my goals are for the year and how I'm doing so far. I'm still like relatively hopeful that I'll accomplish those goals because I didn't set a lot out. But yeah, they, I can tell already my brain is not quite as focused on those. And then I did a book haul. Um, I combined my June and July books into one haul video because I didn't do one in June. Uh, so I just threw it into one big one, at least big for me. <laughs> okay, now to talk about the books that I read in July, end of June-ish July. <laughs> so the first three books are all the books that I read while on vacation. The first one I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And it's my first Taylor Jenkins Reid and she's definitely an author that I will probably be reading more of her books. There is this really famous movie star named Evelyn Hugo who uh, decides that she wants to write sort of like a tell-all biography about her book and she sort of like handpicks this one writer who is not very like high staffed on this magazine um, to be the one to write her biography and she basically tells this writer her life story and so you are basically reading about Evelyn Hugo's life story but you also get to see a little bit about her in present day and you get to see a little bit about the writer. Yeah like I said I enjoyed this book. I gave it I think a three and a half out of five stars. Taylor Jenkins read is like super super readable like you get completely pulled into the story um, and it's really easy to like fly through her book so if you're ever in like a reading slump or if like me you're going on vacation and you want something that's like each easily digestible um, this would definitely be it but the thing that's really nice about this author she takes things that seem very like ordinary or it seems like very like typical chit lit sort of topics um, but she adds either like extra depth or extra dimension to all of them so it's always just like a little bit more than just a typical like light and fluffy read. So yeah I'm not going to talk about what the something more is in here because it's sort of like part of the reveal of Evelyn Hugo talking about her life but it is also just really interesting reading this book because as the title suggests, like Evan Lynn Hugo, this character was married seven times. And so she talks a lot about why she married all of those different people. Part of it was because of love. Part of it was because of situations. Part of it was just to help her like career in Hollywood, which is a thing that I think people know happens in Hollywood, but I don't know completely how well known that is. If you're someone who likes historical fiction or if you like sort of like old Hollywood type of stuff, this might be a good book to pick up. The next book that I finished was uh, The Moving Finger by Agatha Christie. This is a really, really short book. It's like about 200 pages. So I read this all in one sitting. Um, this one is a Miss Marple book. And yeah, there isn't really a lot to say about it. It's not the best Agatha Christie I've ever read, but it's also just like a standard Agatha Christie. It's a fun mystery book. If you've never read Agatha Christie before, start with like one of her bigger books like The Murder on the Orient Express or And Then There Were None or something along those lines or The Murder of Roger Ackroyd is another really great one. Um, this one is just kind of like mid-level. Not horrible but not great either. <laughs> in this one you are following these two characters who like move to the small town in England and these the people in this small town start getting like really nasty letters and then one of the people who gets a nasty letter ends up dead and so it's about sort of 
figuring out who's writing these letters and who ended up killing this person, all of this different stuff. It's kind of like fun, small town sort of, I don't want to say romp because, you know, it's a murder, but you know, that sort of like small town drama sort of situation that happens here. But yeah, it was like a good vacation read. I liked it. And then the final book I read while on vacation was The Windfall by Dick Basu. This is basically a comedy of manners book that takes place in New Delhi, India. You are following this family who's the father uh, recently sold like a website for a lot of money so they are moving from this sort of smaller apartment complex in New Delhi to like their own house in a richer part of Delhi. It's the two of them and they also have a son who's in his 20s who is studying in the United States at university. So it's partially about this family like moving up in society and trying to figure out you know how to belong in the sort of upper classes of society while also trying not to completely like push aside all of their old friends and neighbors and it's also about the son sort of figuring out who he is and what he wants while he studies in the United States. Yeah again this was just like a really fun read. It talks a lot about Indian culture and society but I think that a lot of the stuff that's talked about in here is also just really universal to uh, stories about like class structure and things like that. This is another one that's relatively short and so I kind of wish this one was a little bit longer because I think there's a lot of cultural stuff in here that's talked about really briefly um, that doesn't go very deep like the whole storyline with the sun goes by like really quickly and really easily and a lot more smoothly than I think it typically would go in real life. But yeah, again, overall, I think it's a just like a good summer read. It's really fun um, and funny. And yeah, it's a really great exploration of like class and class structure that just like sort of happens to take place in India. The next book I finished in July was The Beautiful Thing That Heaven Bears by Dinawe Ming. Getsu. This was his debut novel and I picked this up at a used bookstore. It's sort of one I've like had on my list for years to pick up eventually. In this story you are following this man named Sefa Stephanos who fled Ethiopia around like 17 years prior to when this book takes place and so he fled to the United States to sort of like make a better life for himself but he ends up in this poor part of Washington DC. Um, he's running his own sort of like convenience store and his only friends are like these two other immigrants from Africa. And so he leads this very like isolated, very poor life. Then all of a sudden things start changing in the neighborhood and this one house gets bought by this like upper class white woman who moves in with her daughter. And so they form sort of like a friendship. And so it talks a lot about sort of the changing and gentrifying neighborhoods in Washington DC and how that affects these people in these neighborhoods, but also explores sort of like a failed American dream sort of situation. Like what happens when you come to the United States with all these hopes and dreams and then, you know, your life does not turn out the way that you expected it to. Um, so it deals with sort of like that immigrant narrative, um, turns it on its head a little bit while also just taking place in Washington DC. I think I gave this book a three out of five stars, maybe a three and a half out of five stars. I don't remember exactly. It's just another one of those books where it's relatively short and I think there's a lot of like ideas and concepts that are just explored in here that are really interesting and really good and the characters are really interesting but I think there was just a little bit too much in too little space. I just wanted more depth. I feel like this is my complaint all the time with stories like this. It's just there's so much that can be explored and it's just too short for what they're trying to do. Add like 50 more pages in here and I would be happy but yeah overall I really enjoyed it and I definitely want to check out more of his books. I know he just had one that came out last year or two years ago called All Our Names. Um, that's definitely on my list of books to check out. The next book that I finished was Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, the untold story of Wu-Tang Clan's million dollar secret album, The Devaluation of Music in America's New Public Enemy Number 1. This is a nonfiction book and it goes over all of those topics that are stated in the subtitle. Um, I talked about this a little bit in my book call so if you haven't checked that out definitely uh, do so because I do talk about like sort of how I came to acquire this book. But yeah, this was a book I was super interested in once I heard about it because I followed sort of the saga behind this Wu-Tang Clan album. The short story, if you can like shorten it, is basically uh, they decided to put out this album that there was only going to be like one copy of in the entire world. They were not going to sell it and they or they were not going to sell it to like the masses for the people to hear. They were just going to create this single recording single physical recording and they were going to sell that off as if it was like a piece of art or like an artifact or something along those lines. However, 
bought it had to you sign a contract saying they weren't going to like upload it or anything along those lines. And this book basically explores how they came up with the concept, why they decided to make the choices that they did. It talks a lot about some of the other options that they had and why those may not have worked out. There's a lot of really great talk in here in terms of like the value of music as seen by society as well as the value of music compared to other types of contemporary art. America's New Public Enemy number one comes into play because the guy who ended up buying this album is basically one of those pharma bros who like jacks up pharmaceutical prices and so there was like a lot of tension behind that but yeah i found it to be really interesting the writing in here can get like really bro -y at times uh the guy who wrote this book was basically an advisor on the album as well which is why he has so much knowledge about this stuff but yeah i really liked it i mean i shouldn't say i really liked it but i found it really enjoyable and i just found the discussions in here to be really interesting it talks a lot about the value of things like contemporary art and how music is viewed as sort of like a lesser in terms of contemporary art and then like hip-hop is sort of even lesser than that and how they were trying to convey the value that this album was going to have and things like that without also you know completely alienating their fan base and trying to pretend like they were something like more than they actually were and things like that so yeah i i thought it was really interesting i don't know if this is going to be everyone's cup of tea i think it helps a lot that i followed this sort of saga as it was happening uh so to get sort of like background and insight was something that i personally really enjoyed but yeah if it sounds like something you'd be interested in i definitely would recommend it if you are a fan of the wu-tang clan or you're just really interested in the music industry or even if you're interested in like contemporary art and discussions around that i think that this might be of interest to you the next book that i finished was each vagabond by name by margot orlando littell this is a book that's printed by a small press called Uno Press. They had contacted me. I think they sent me this book earlier this year or maybe it was last year and I decided to take them up on it because it sounded really interesting and it turns out that it was very good. This story takes place in a small town in Pennsylvania. It starts off when this sort of like band of gypsies come into town. I feel like gypsies makes them sound like more like magical or mystical than they actually are but it's basically just like a group of like vagabonds. They're all relatively young for the most part and you're mainly following these two characters named Ramsey and Stella who are residents of the small town that these vagabonds come into. Uh, Ramsey owns sort of like the local bar and he becomes really interested in these people who come into town after like one of them sort of like wanders like near his bar and he realizes sort of like how hungry and helpless they are. Um, and then the woman Stella, she like lost her daughter a couple of years ago like her daughter went missing i mean she never really found out what happened to her and so she has this like weird feeling that the vagabonds might know where she is and there's a lot of tension happening between uh, these vagabonds and the people who live in this town because the vagabonds are basically stealing from the townspeople uh in order to get money and to get food and things like that. Ramsey and Stella are sort of put in this position where they are intrigued and sort of kind of want to help these people out, but also like everyone else in the town wants to sort of just like drive them out as soon as possible. Yeah, like I said, this was a really good book. I think I gave this a four out of five stars. The writing in here is really, really beautiful. Um, It's a very like slow moving book. It moves very slowly through time and there's also a lot of flashbacks that happen. So you get to see a lot of history in Ramsey's life and a lot of like Stella's history and things like that and you get to see sort of like how they got to where they are today. I will say that the timeline gets like a little bit fuzzy in my opinion. Uh, there were points where I was reading chapters in this book and I couldn't remember if it was telling me about present day, present day in terms of this book, or if it was telling me about stories from the past. But I think that the character study in here is really interesting. There's a lot of really great discussions in terms of like outsiders and even just like mob mentality and things like that. Yeah, it's just a very beautiful, quiet character study of a book. I, I really enjoyed it a lot and I kind of want to see if this author is going planning on putting out more books or even just checking out more stuff from Uno Press to see if they have other books sort of like this because it was a really, really enjoyable read. Next I finished This is the Story of a Happy Marriage by Ann Patchett. This is basically like a collection of essays and a collection of some of the nonfiction pieces that she's written for various like magazines and newspapers throughout the years. I really enjoyed it. I really love Ann Patchett's writing a whole lot and I feel like this sort of like solidifies that for me because it proves that she could write about anything and I'm 100% there going to read it. She talks about a lot of things um, because again this covers like 
decades of writing for her. There are pieces in here about her family, like growing up. There are pieces in here about her opening up her bookstore. There are pieces in here about her marriage. Um, there are a number of pieces in here that talk about things like love and marriage and her relationship with her husband. But there's also stuff where she talks about like her dog and how she doesn't want to have children. And there's a piece in here about how like she got in trouble with a university, I think it was Clemson, banned one of her books and then she went on to speak there. So it talks about, you know, her being banned and then it also provides like the speech that she gave and I think there's also a commencement speech that's included in here. So it's kind of all over the board. So if you're someone who likes Ann Patchett's writing, this is a great piece to pick up. But like it's sort of a your mileage will may vary sort of situation because depending on how interested you are in the topics, you may very an interest in this actual essay collection but she goes across so many different topics that I feel like there's at least one here that you're probably going to enjoy. Then I read The Fact of a Body by Alexandria Marzano Lesnovich. This is a pretty new release. This is a nonfiction book. The subtitle to this is A Murder and a Memoir and that's exactly what it is. It's basically a combination of like a true crime nonfiction book along with a memoir about Alexandria Marzano Lesnovich's life. So in this book there are basically like two different storylines that you are following. You're following this author as she talks about her life growing up and how she ends up going to law school and while she's in law school she ends up like interning or working at this law firm in Louisiana. She is staunchly pro-life in terms of like the death penalty. She ends up working for this law firm that defends people who are on death row and one of the cases that she comes across is for this man who is a pedophile as well as murdered someone, murdered a small child. And so she is forced to sort of like reckon with that as well as reckon with some stuff that had happened in her past. Um, I'm not sure if I want to say any more than that because I think part of what's interesting about this book is how she reveals parts of her life to the reader as well as reveals parts of Ricky who is the murderer in this case, his life and his family's life in this story. Yeah, this was a very good book but it's a very difficult book to read. The memoir parts are actually the hardest parts of this book to read about. I think that there is a slight detachment when she's talking about Ricky and his family because obviously it's not her life that she's talking about. So it makes it a little bit easier to read about those things. But when she's writing about the things that happened in her life, it's so difficult to read that I actually had to take like breaks, like significant breaks. Like I would could only read maybe like 50 pages at most a day because it was just like too much. I will say that I kind of wish that there was more of the true crime aspect or the mystery and like murder stuff happening in here. She gets like really heavy with the memoir side especially towards the end and while again it's all interesting I also felt like I was missing a little bit with the other side of the story but overall I really I feel like enjoyed is the wrong word with books like these but I was just like so intrigued by the story and so like pulled into it. It's very very well written but yeah major trigger warnings if you have any sort of triggers with deals with like abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, any of those things because she's very forthright in all of those types of details. But yeah I definitely recommend it especially if you're someone who enjoys true crime or you enjoy memoir. This is one to pick up despite the fact that it's a very difficult read. And then the final book that I finished this month was The Bastard of Istanbul by Elif Shafak. This is a book I was really looking forward to because I really enjoyed the other two Elif Shafak books that I have read and a lot of people highly recommended this one after I read those other two. I liked this book but I didn't love it. I feel I'm like hesitating saying that because I feel like I should have liked this book more than I did um, because it wasn't so much that it was a bad book but I felt like I couldn't really connect with this book. So in the story you are following sort of like two families. There's this one character named Armanoush who is half Armenian half American and she's sort of like figuring out her place and her identity when she decides that she wants to learn more about like the Armenian side of her family and travels to Istanbul. And then you are also following this other family that is Turkish. One of the characters is named is Asa. Asia? Asia? I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that name. I apologize. Like I said her family is all Turkish. They live in Istanbul and she is sort of getting to the age where she's starting to like rebel against her family and she thinks a lot about like philosophy and she's really into like Johnny Cash and things like that and their two sort of like storylines sort of collide. The writing in here is really fantastic. Alicia Falk is a fantastic writer. She really paints a picture and she really creates 
interesting and complicated characters who explore sort of like these gray areas of life, which is the reason why I think I like Alicia Fox so much. The problem that I had with this book is a problem that I have been repeating a lot and it's just that it wasn't quite long enough or deep enough for all of the things that Alicia Fox was exploring. She does this really interesting thing because Armenians and Turkish people have this sort of fraught history and so she uses these two characters as a way to explore that a little bit. There's also a lot of really interesting discussions in here about like Middle Eastern culture. Um, there's discussions of philosophy, um, there's discussions about family and history and fate and it's a lot. There's a lot happening in this story and I think that's just my problem with it is that there's so much and it is also interesting but none of it was quite enough. I feel like there are like four different storylines happening in here that all could have been their own separate books. This one gets a three and a half out of five stars for me because it's again really really well written, really fantastic characters but there's just so much happening in this book that I feel like isn't explored in the way that I wanted it. Like the depth of the exploration wasn't what I wanted it to be. Cut out a couple of the storylines and expand them out into their own separate books and I would have been so much happier. So yeah, those are all of the books that I have to talk about in this video. If you've made it all the way to the end, congratulations because this video is hella long. So yeah, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know if you've read any of these books, your thoughts on them. Um, I know a couple of these are books that are really well loved by viewers out there because you guys have told me that you really enjoyed them when I like hauled them in separate videos and things like that. Um, so feel free to talk about them down in the comments below or if you have any questions about any of these books feel free to uh, leave that down in the comment section as well. I know that I went through this relatively quickly because there were so many books to talk about so yeah feel free to ask any questions that you have down in the comment section. So yeah that's all I have for now and thanks for watching.